L. I call him L. That's what everyone called him. I just remember seeing him in the neighborhood. We went to school together, and then as we got a little bit older, we dated a little bit on and off. And then when we were in our 20s, he went to prison. 28 years to life sentence for a murder I, I didn't even see. I wasn't even present. I was nowhere near it. It was so unbelievable that he was convicted as a murderer. My son kept telling me, he said, Ma, it's going to all come out in the end. And then when they shipped him away, and that was a bad day for me because I passed out just hearing guilty, guilty, guilty. And at that moment, I knew I was like, the fix was in. It was like, I'm going to jail. Like, they got their mind made up. These are my babies right here in this chalet. She was born December 23rd, right before Christmas. I went to prison in April 2nd. So like three, four months after she was born, and this is the first picture I got of her. And I didn't even recognize her. I didn't know who she was, she was so big. It's like the first note my daughter ever wrote me. She said, I miss you very, very much. Hope you come home very soon. I pray for you every night for you to get out of jail. I love you very, 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 very much, Chantel. It took me a minute to really realize certain people weren't going to be here when I got here. My grandfather, he was the hardest working man I ever knew, like strongest man ever. Instilled in me how to be a man, how to take care of your family. He passed while I was in prison. My grandmother and my sister had came to see me. And they told me he had passed. I was behind glass, and I couldn't hug my grandmother. That just ate me up, like, man, I couldn't hug my granny. And I was like, I got to get home. You know, some people, when they get doors closed in their face, they use it for an excuse to just go into a slump. Every time I got denied, it was like, I just got fueled, like, oh, no, I'm going back in again. Like, I'm going to find some more stuff. I'm going to get a new affidavit. I'm going to look for another lawyer. Like, I got to go home. It was mandatory. I had to go home. We got back in touch through a friend of mine. It was just friendship at first. I was interested in hearing his version of what happened. I wanted to know the truth. Right away, I was completely interested in what I could do to help him. And then that friendship just turned into a relationship. The one question she asked that nobody had ever asked before, she was like, what can we do to get you out of jail? I orchestrated protests and rallies. And I just went from news station to radio station until at least one person took interest. She was fierce. She put the fight on. And the drive that she had woke up the drive that my family had. They joined forces, and it was, it, was, it was on from there. He got his phone call, and he just started talking about his case and said someone else admitted to doing the murder, and I was kind of fresh out of law school, and I thought, well, that's easy to fix. Someone else said they did it. I was like, look, I got life in jail. I'm trying to come home. I need you. And she's like, I'll be down there ASAP. We were able to meet her for the first time. She looked him right in the face and told him, Look, I believe you. I think that's the most important thing. I believe you and can promise you an outcome, but I can promise you my best work. As years went by, I sort of had a harder time staying positive. Once you get past your direct appeals, it's really hard to get to the court for meaningful consideration. But Kim wrote the CIU application. Once people were able to read that for themselves, it drew a lot of attention to his case. Kyle Swenson wrote an article about him. Kyle was friends with Brian Howe at the Innocence Project. My legal advice to Al was like, their reputation is earned, and if you can get their name on the bottom of your filings, you're in a better position. There were several things that made it an intriguing case. You did have this attorney who'd been clearly working above and beyond because she clearly believed in his innocence. We went through all of our regular due diligence once she brought it to our attention, and it just became clear, how can we not take this case when we know he didn't have anything to do with this crime? They came to see me at OSP. Jennifer, Andrew, Ruby, and I swear that man Andrew knew my case back to front. It was a bit of an obsession on my end, as some people might say, because I really dove headfirst into the case. Now, we was talking, and he was telling me things that happened during the trial. Like he was there. If you talk to other fellows at the Innocence Project, they would say I was almost annoying with how into that case I was. I mean, I think for Andrew and I, it was always very clear that he was innocent. We poured over thousands of pages of transcripts. We investigated it to help build a persuasive argument that he was, in fact, innocent. 
It just touched me. It was like, man, somebody really cares. I would recommend the OIP to every client and every lawyer. Working with them changed the direction of Bell's case, largely in part because they have a history of really good work and their reputation is unmatched. I could believe it was happening, but I couldn't believe it. It was like, I'm flying here. And I had Kim and Jennifer on the side of me, and I was just fighting back tears because I couldn't believe I just spent all these years in jail. Today is the day he's coming out today. This whole group of people is not leaving until we're leaving with Ruel. When I walked out, it was like, all oh, this for me? <laughs> Somebody that made it out from the face of many people who didn't make it out. Like, there's a lot more in there. We gotta keep fighting for all of them. I can see, I'm gonna continue to fight for them for sure. The OIP, they bring a father to their kids, they bring a son to their mother. Hey, mom, how was that hug? It was good. It was good. It really was. I'm so happy he home. The public sees the joyous occasions of walking free, but every exoneree struggles. It is a hard adjustment. Every one that I know of who's gone through this has some form of PTSD. Always inspired by our exonerees. When we have a new person who's getting out of prison, eight to 10 of them will work their schedule so they can be there and give advice as soon as the person gets out. Every one of us have PTSD of some form. Yeah. You've got PTSD, yeah. it's to figure out how severe it is. Because I'm telling you what, it is an absolute fit of rage you cannot control whatsoever. And they just giving me the rundown on how it go. This is my first day out. I've been gone for 15 years, and these guys, they've been through what I'm going through right now today. The exonerees tend to be drawn to one another, and they form a relationship where they support each other and they have each other's backs. Watching the exonerees watch a new exoneree come out is always amazing because you can just see them go back in that space themselves. With Charles Jackson, it was like, wow, like, I know he had deal for like 27 years. Of course I'd be there. Chris, they had called, like, he need clothes for court. And I'm like, come get me. That's my dude. I know him personally, so of course. The OIP gave me that chance to do that. Anything they asked me for, I'm here. Ruel struck me as a guy who was aware of his position and the voice he has. He's wanted to speak out and share his experiences and help younger people. I want to encourage some of y'all to go to school, go to law school, be prosecutors. Don't just be a defense lawyer. Don't think that it's all about being defense lawyers, like, because it's two sides to a courtroom, and we need to be balanced. I mean, he's made the most of his first year. He's come up with plans to start a business. Comic Club is like my story in clothes. Started off as an acronym for creating options, making more achievements. Well, I started reading it on the actual symbol of the comma. It's basically a short pause in the sentence or a story and then it continues. And so I feel like me being in prison for 15 years for a crime I didn't commit was just a short pause. And now I'm continuing, and my story is not over. My story ain't ever over. The club is everybody. We all part of the club. Whatever you're going through right now at this moment is just a short pause. Your life will continue and go on. Two years ago, on my birthday, I went to see him, and he got down on one knee, and I'm like, what are you doing? I was so embarrassed. <laughs> He asked me to marry him, and of course I said yes. I was happy to know that I would be getting married one day. It was just sad that I didn't know when. What better day to do it than on his one-year anniversary? It's these steps where one year ago today, they celebrated finally starting their lives together. If you're an exoneree, I think your Freedom Day becomes more important than your birthday. It's your annual one special day of the year. It's the day they won the Super Bowl, but even better. After so many years of fighting to be together, today proves that nothing can keep us apart. Me being in prison and me being wrongfully convicted, we went through the ups and downs and the hard times. Everything in our past is in the past. I vowed to be that man I told y'all I'd be when I first met you the first time on the phone. You my best friend, you my right hand. The day he walked out solidified their relationship. I do. I do. I now pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Sailor. Yay!